Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the SPEMA Council podcast. I'm your host for today, Dylan Sharrow. With me, I have Kayla Black. Welcome to the podcast, Kayla. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to, to be a part of the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Big, uh, big shoes to fill here. Episode two. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit about Kayla. Kayla Black is the current director of Team Success at Millions Co., uh, a company who connects the sports world with technology. Kayla previously graduated from Ryerson University, which is now Toronto Metropolitan University, with a Bachelor of Sports Media with a minor in Psychology. We are happy to welcome Kayla as our second guest of Season 5 here on the SPEMA Council Podcast. So, Kayla, can you start off by just telling us who Millions is and what your current role is with them? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I guess just to summarize it as briefly as possible, uh, Millions is a social commerce and video platform for athletes and essentially we are the go-to platform for athletes to come on and essentially um, earn revenue from the name image and likeness while also having the opportunity to connect with fans on a different level so when athletes come to millions they have the opportunity to use all of the products that we have available on our platform which is um, merchandise memorabilia experiences there's also the streaming side of our business which entails uh watch parties um podcasts and pay-per-views so like everything just continues to grow more and more on millions which is really exciting because we have a bunch of new things coming um in the very very near future and it's just been great to uh be a part of the company for as long as I have I um joined the company about two years ago yeah two years ago now and uh, I started in the role of team success and in any other place team success would be human resources but that's a horribly boring name for yeah. sports company so uh, it got labeled as team success and exactly what the name is it's kind of my role and responsibility to help the team be successful and to do that it's a matter of recruiting great people keeping them happy ensuring that the engine continues to run in the background with a lot of different initiatives that I do. And it's been really, really fun and exciting and great for the past two years. And I'm really excited to continue to keep going and, and watching not just the team progress, but the company progress as well, too. Yeah, no, that sounds awesome. As someone who is interested in sport media and working with athletes and everything, you know, on ice, on the field performance, as well as the behind the scenes, talking with everything, that sounds great idea. I've never really heard of much as much in depth uh of like a company that millions really is so it's really cool and innovative to hear um and then how obviously sport media is huge growing industry uh how do you think that degree of sport media from Ryerson really helped you within the career and just helped you a million so far yeah yeah for sure that's a great question so I would say my sport media degree helped me in a lot of different ways especially at Ryerson because it's funny because at Ryerson, the sport media program was still in its very, very early stages when I joined. I think I was the third class to join, if I'm not mistaken. So no one technically graduated from sport media when I joined the program. So it was in its early stages. But I find that when something's in its early stages, you really get to be a part of the growth. And you get that more hands-on, authentic, raw experience than you do with the more formalized structured curriculum that's been there for 20 X years that gets improved little by little. I found that I was a part of a, a, a curriculum that was evolving and growing right in front of me. And I got to be a part of it, which is kind of similar to my role here at Millions because uh, we are still in the early stages of the company, like I mentioned. So you get to be a part of the growth and involvement in that sense. And um, I got that direct experience from my education, which now translates into what I do at the company that I'm at, which is awesome. And I had a lot of really, really great um, teachers, mentors, instructors when I was in the sport media program, um, such as Dan Berlin, Nicole Forster, like they were really great people who really helped to build where I am now and also helped me to, um, I know, just kind of just explore the different areas of sport media, because a lot of people think, and I think majority of people who um, join the sport media program think like, oh, I'm going to be an on-air broadcaster, I'm going to be like, you know, front stage, that's what everyone thinks when they join the program, but they really just help you explore so many different avenues in the sport media world, which is super valuable and how I ended up here where I am now. 
Yeah, I mean, that's exactly, it's it's very similar to Brock University Sport Management. Everyone comes in, you know, the professors always talk about it, thinking they're going to be the next general manager of the Leafs, the next Dubas type of thing coming in. Um, but then definitely with a degree so diverse, it opens so many doors, I'm sure, uh, similar to sport media and sport management alike, um, that there's just so many pathways that just open up for you, especially like millions, you know. Did you think kind of going into to sport media that this is where you'd end up? Like, did you have your eyes set anywhere like that? Absolutely not. I did not think that I would be in a human resources role leaving sport media because they're so completely different. But um, initially when I joined, like I said, I thought I was going to be in front of a camera. But then as the years progressed while I was in school, I really fell in love with the production of um, live sporting events, directing live sporting events, and just really getting like that sort of behind the scenes experience, I guess. And it's been interesting transitioning into a people role because I was drawn to the company based on my background of sport media, of course, like the athletes, the streaming, the watch parties and stuff like that. But then it kind of also tied in my minor, which is psychology of really just understanding people and as well as having a, a background in customer service and like the work that I've done, it just kind of tied everything in a fancy little bow of everything that I love into one particular role. So it's not what I expected, but inevitably became something that I really love. So. Right. No. Yeah, absolutely. Fair. I mean, I'm only in my second year right now, so like it's hard to really plan out what I want to do, but even talking to some of the upper years, like people that have made a plan, really, it never follows it exactly. You think you're going one direction, then boom, it splits into six different ways. Yeah, um, especially just, when you graduate during COVID. <laughs> yeah, oh no, I'm sure that was definitely. COVID, were you a 2020 you a world where there's no sports happening and you have a sport <laughs> media degree? No plan works out that way. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure that was, so that was 2020 you graduated then? Yeah, I graduated in April of 2020. Wow, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that was really, uh, kind of a scary time to be getting out and trying to find a real sports job and everything like that. Yeah, there was <laughs> nothing happening. My, I remember my, my internship with Sportsnet got cut short because it had to be in person. I was in a control room and like everything. I remember I was going in for a job interview the day that the lockdown happened and it was just <laughs> like, okay, like you can come back in two weeks and everything gets like lifted up. And it's like, nope, <laughs> that yeah, definitely didn't well, happen. <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of, of internships here at Brock with sport management, we have a opportunity to do an internship in our fourth year. And we know that you've been involved with a couple internship programs with millions with sports net, a couple things like that. Uh, can you give some students, sport management students, any advice or tips about taking on an opportunity early in their career like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, my biggest piece of advice when it comes to picking an internship and just finding um, the experience is find something that is hands-on and that gives you the most personalized experience because I find that with um, any internship you do it's really just being able to explore a new opportunity because you might have a perspective of like hey if I join this internship that aligns so perfectly with like the skills that I know that I'm familiar with that are just like um, you know, I guess perfect. And I guess a sense, it may not live up to your expectations. So going to an internship with like an open mind and just be really willing to explore different avenues, I guess, really with whatever internship you do, because at Millions, we give students the opportunity to participate in athlete engagement, um, design, there's video editing, social media. So there are a lot of different avenues that you can go down. And I find sometimes students start in one space of an internship and end up somewhere completely different. And it's like really cool to get that experience. So I know that's a little bit of a tangent that didn't follow a straight line, but <laughs> that would be my advice. Right. So I know you're like in the hiring process at Millions and everything. So what are you looking for when someone applies, whether it be for an internship or a job? Yeah. So uh, one of the things that I really look for is ambition. Someone who is really, really just willing to, to put themselves out there. They're not afraid to take on um, a challenging task or a new task or something that they may not be familiar with. And um, one of the great things about our internship program here at Millions is that our CEO actually does give um, sort of like an intro call to the, the students that are coming to Millions. And it's like great to get that sort of 
introduction from the CEO directly. And one of the things that he looks for are people who um, are asking questions, who are attentive, who are just there to really understand what the company is about and are like just showing great sort of exemplatory skills of like, wow, I really want to be here. I really want to be a part of the process. So just being like present in the moment as well as showing that excitement and that drive to really just want to learn and be a part of something new are things that I look for because like I said, we're still a pretty new company. So that, that comes with wearing a lot of different hats. So if you're open to learning and exploring while having that excitement, then that's that's what it's all about. Right, no, absolutely. Um, So we're gonna switch the tides a little bit here. We were talking about the industry. Now we're gonna talk a bit more fun side of the sports side. So did you grow up playing any sports as a kid? And what sports? Because I'm sure you're very into into the sporting world, I'm assuming, from your job and your program and everything that you've been through. Yeah, yeah. So, like, obviously, we're, we're sitting down and you can't tell, but I'm actually six feet tall. I played basketball growing up um, with the height. I've always been super, super tall. And, um, yeah, I played basketball for about 10 years. I stopped at the, like, at high school level, I guess you could say. I had a couple of scholarship offers, but unfortunately, I tore my shoulder twice. Um, and that was just kind of the end of things. And if I'm being honest, I also wasn't that good. Um, <laughs> I was just tall and, and athletic, but I didn't have like that, that D1 level skill set to play basketball. But I, I love the sport. I love sports in general. And I didn't want my journey to end there when it came to the passion that I had for sports. And um, although I was still considering um, potentially taking a scholarship offer and exploring a new experience, when I heard about the sport media program at Ryerson and that it was super small and competitive to get in, like that competitive nature from playing basketball kind of kicked in. I'm like, oh, I'm going to school there. I don't care if they accept 60 students. I'm going to be one of the 60. <laughs> so yeah, basketball is how I, I ended up in the place where I am now. So going to school in Toronto, then are you a Raptors fan? Yes. Okay. That's yeah. a very <laughs> tricky question because like I've grown up watching the Raptors, rooting right. for the Raptors and everything. But like after 2019 and the bubble, my passion just slowly started to fizzle because like you just get such a high high from like being a, the world champion. Right, and yeah. Just like with all the changes and everything happening, it was just so hard to continue to be like a dedicated Raptors fan. But like I still watch every single game. <laughs> if I'm well, no, I'd call that a dedicated fan for sure. <laughs> Doesn't make you want to like just taste that championship again. You know what it feels like before. So just to get back to that high type of thing. Oh my gosh, absolutely. <laughs> I would do anything like to just be like, okay, like I want the Raptors to get it again. Like that was the best moment in like sports history for me. So <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, fair. I mean, even, you know, I'm, I'm five, seven. So I definitely wasn't looking at those, uh, those basketball scholarships like you were, <laughs> um, but I can definitely say like, you know, 90% of Canadians, I loved watching that, that run, even not as, as hockey is definitely my main sport uh, with all these jerseys. Really? And I nice day, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even, even I, I love that run. It was so much fun to watch. Um, so then I know obviously that was your favorite sports experience to watch as a fan, I'm sure was the 2019 run. So then what has been your favorite sports media experience that you've been a part of either throughout your career or internships or really anything through there? Yeah, so I would say it kind of does tie into my favorite sport because one of my favorite sport media experiences was actually while I was still in school and I was doing my capstone project where um, I was myself and an amazing group of people and we had to put on an event, do marketing for it, plan, run logistics, and our whole thing was called Foundations for Opportunity where we got to interview great people in the sports industry. And our final event was with um, Matt Batia, the super fan. And it was actually really cool because he came to Ryerson. There was a lot of people that came out to like, just essentially like for us to interview him, get to know more about him and just learn more about the super fan. And it was really cool to just have the experience of knowing what goes into putting on like a super cool marketing sport media event and just all of the steps and all of the different sort of ways that you got to reach out to people and put yourself out there so I would say that was probably one of my favorite sport media um, personal experiences that I was involved in so I hope that answers the question I mean yeah no absolutely that sounds awesome I mean I see you know him all the time on tv every time I turn sports on he's always there so always there no matter what <laughs> 
excuse me, like that is, that's absolutely awesome. Um, so that's all the questions I have. Uh, usually at the end of the episodes, we give the floor to the guests, let you, you know, give any advice, ask any questions, just really take the floor to anything, uh, that you want to say. So is there anything that you want to say to our audience here as we conclude the episode? Um, I guess my closing remarks would be to continue to be excited. I'll always continue to uh, have a learning mindset where you're open to learning because even when you graduate, you're going to continue to learn in each and everything you do. And I always tell people that like every conversation you have, every sort of like network you build is an opportunity to learn in all the experiences you do. And I feel like when you're able to take things away from those things, it's like amazing no matter what. And um, yeah, when it comes to just sport media, sport management, whatever um, direction you're going down, um, just continue to be a sports fan at heart because whatever work that you do, it becomes 10 times more fun when you actually enjoy the sport or whatever the focus is. I know sometimes work can be draining, tiring, exhausting, but when you still have that passion as a sports fan, it makes everything just feel really, really rewarding at the end of the day. So never lose that passion. Continue to watch sports, even if you're a video editor and you have to clip together sports all day long. Continue to, to watch sports you enjoy, find find joy in it, find leisure in it, go to sporting events. Um, and yeah, just continue to keep that fire alive. Right. Well, I'm sure 99% of the people watching this are looking to get into the sport industry type of thing. Uh, sport management majors, sport media majors, everything alike. Uh, so yeah, great advice. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing all your experiences and everything. Yeah. I'm so glad that um, I got invited to be on the podcast. It's probably one of the first podcast invites I've gotten um, in, in quite some time. So it was really cool to, to be on it. And I, I hope that it was a good experience for you as well, too. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love, I love hearing just experience of everybody in the sport industry and millions is such a, a unique uh, and innovative company. I've never really talked to anybody that's been involved in anything like that. So it's, it's some great uh, stuff to hear fantastic thank you so much i'm sure it won't be the last podcast i'm sure you have a lot more of those coming up so thank you we'll remember you as uh as one of the first here awesome (laughs) sounds good to me i like that i like that good vibes good energy (laughs) absolutely all right perfect so everyone thank you for watching episode two season five um and we'll see you guys in the next episode